Okay, I've, I've had this request a few times already. $50 and finding good vlogging gear. And since I'm reviewing a lot of action cameras, I'll, I'll stick to the action camera world. Now, what we need, we need decent audio quality, which a lot of people underestimate, but this is essential for proper vlogging. And of course you need acceptable video quality. So for $50, my pick would be the Ekin H9R. Buying a good action camera for 50 bucks is certainly a challenge. And to fit within this budget, we have to carefully balance a lot of variables, including accessories, image quality, audio quality, features, resolutions, and so on. Apparently, looking at this box, you won't get the feeling that any of them are less than good. And that's the reason you are here, to check the qualities of the H9R. I've said it many times and will continue to defend my statement, unboxing Ekin's devices has always been among my favorites. No matter if it is high-end or budget-friendly camera, Ekin are able to provide exceptional experience and overall I'm a huge fan of their accessories. You can refer to some of the older videos on the channel showing their models and know the consistency. We get plenty of useful mounts here and they will help you to place the camera in various angles and positions that get the most out of its mobility. Where a smartphone wouldn't fit, an action camera could be positioned. And there are plenty of awesome tripods out there. Speaking of tripod, because of the budget-friendly price, we don't have one in the package as opposed to the H6S and the H7S models. But that is not a deal-breaker. Let's talk about the hardware. Nothing too shiny. In fact, the first big section where we tend to notice corners cut. Chipset is Sun Plus 6350 and packed with 4 megapixel Omnivision sensor. To put it in simple words, this doesn't produce real 4K. It is fake 4K, interpolated from likely 1080p. Resolutions aren't everything, but could be a major criteria for some people. At the end, you won't get the picture that is as crisp as some of the true 4K action cameras are producing, but you will still be able to record in good-looking full HD. And even now, in 2018, there are many productions that look good enough recorded in full HD. Perhaps this is the best possible balance, especially comparing with last year's affordable action cams that were based on weaker chipset and significantly worse image sensor. If you're wondering, is this any good for vlogging? In my opinion, this is the best $50 starter pack because you can count on acceptable audio quality which is easy to post-process. The picture is trickier and you will have to be searching for lighter places, preferably daylight. Going darker adds a lot of noise, but the detail level remains good. The images are not sharp, but even the $200 GoPro Hero 2018 doesn't output detailed enough picture. Now, hang tight about what you are going to hear next. If we closely compare the output of 1080p versus 2.7K and 4K, we will notice that Full HD is actually better and more detailed than the rest. The interpolation seems to worsen the image quality and I've decided to shoot at full HD for most of the review samples because they look better. The difference between 60 and 30 FPS on full HD is luckily insignificant. Surprisingly, the 120 FPS mode on 720p was not that bad either. It is now the time to say about the disadvantages and what we don't get. Please remember the two facts. $50 and plenty of high-quality accessories within that amount already. Well, to the disadvantages. Interpolated 4K and 2.7K, no video time-lapse, no car mode, 
only a few resolutions available, no external microphone support, no color grading, no firmware updates. Unlike other cameras with such wide field of view, the distortion on the H9R is obvious and sometimes disturbing. The good on the other side? We have time-lapse that could be achieved via photos and stitching them is quite easy. There is exposure compensation, the firmware is stable and has no issues and the microphone records rather good audio. Here are some more samples in different scenes with variable lighting conditions. If you study the specifics of the camera, it is indeed very similar to Ekens H7S but without a touchscreen. Other than that, hardware is quite similar, therefore we expect similar performance. Having no stabilization means a lot of shakiness, so if you're going to record yourself, either place it on stable surface or get a gimbal. And to improve the stability of the picture here, I've used a lot the Smooth Q. I'm going to combine the conclusion time uh, together with showing you perhaps among the most challenging sceneries for uh, this action camera. Uh, storm is coming, not sure if you heard it. Um, you can see the trees which are probably banded when you're watching. It's because of the lens distortions which cannot be shut down. And you can see the shakiness. I'm holding this with just bare hands, nothing else. And because there's no stabilization, uh, you are noticing that uh, the image is shaky. Also, uh, a bit of noise probably, which is notable in the picture. And this is the best you can get shooting at 1080p 30 frames per second. To get a bit of stable footage, that's a gimbal, the Smooth Q, which I told you I'm going to be using. And yes, I, I can say that the footage, when it is stabilized, it looks much better. Uh, as a conclusion, uh, shooting at 1080p 30 or 60 frames per second is going to be necessary because you notice that the interpolation going up to 2.7K or even 4K is not good at all. Um, I still believe that the microphone of this camera is rather good and the full HD uh, shooting is more than good for uh, running a vlog and I think that's as much as you can get for a $50 action camera. What do you think? Do you believe there is a better model at a price of 50 bucks? I'm looking forward to hear about some bucks. I'm looking forward to hear about your opinion in the comment section below. Uh, make sure to check some of the other videos that I've recently published about action cameras and hope to see you around. Cheers!